today's focus session we'll be looking at chest stretching. So the chest often promotes a lot of tightness which creates a rounded forward posture and that's something we can undo with gentle stretching and release work. So for this first uh, standing stretch we're going to do a standing pec stretch. You're going to need to position yourself next to a wall or a door frame. I'm going to use my fridge. Um, and we're going to take a standing position. So utilising a split stance, one foot forwards, one foot back, I'm going to place my arm, which is at 90 degrees, from shoulder to elbow and wrist, onto the side of my fridge. Again, it could be a door frame. Um, and I'm going to draw my shoulder blades down the length of my neck and switch on my T-zone. Now I want to make sure that I'm not overarching the lumbar spine here. I'm trying to maintain neutral as much as possible and the T-zone will help me here. I'm going to drop my eye gaze to look down the tip of my nose into the ground, but keep the length in the back of my neck. Now my shoulders are relaxed at this point, and on the exhale I'm gently going to lunge my weight forwards, bending the front knee to come into this stretch gently of pec major. To make my stretch bigger, I can lunge the weight gently forwards, bending the back and front knee to come deeper into the stretch. I want to make sure I'm not arching through the lower back or tilting the pelvis. I'm keeping the T-zone engaged to get the stretch I need. Now I can hold this stretch here for 5 to 10 breaths. And if I want a slightly different stretch, I can place my hand around my rib cage, keep the pressure by pushing into the fridge or the door frame, keeping the T-zone working. On the exhale, I'm gently going to rotate my chest away from my arm. Keep looking down the tip of your nose to look into the ground. Keep the length in the back of the neck and the shoulders softly drawn down. And that will give you a slightly different stretch at the front of the chest itself. You can hold this again for 5 to 10 breaths before returning and releasing. Equally, if you position the arm at a slightly different range, it could be slightly lower than 90 or gently uh, slightly higher, you'll get a slightly different range of chest stretch. So with 90 degrees, I can get more or less a straight line running from the angle of my elbow towards the chest fibre itself. If I was slightly lower, I would be looking at a more inclined um, direction of fibre. And higher, never higher um, than your ear, you'll get a more downwards incline. So that's probably the first point of chest stretching, and I would stretch each side equally, making sure I'm not overarching or losing the T-zone, and I'm only utilising that gentle draw of rib cage away from the pressure point that I'm stretching if I'm able to maintain the T-zone with the hips level. I can also adapt that stretch to take it into some trigger point therapy using the spiky ball, and I would position the arm still at that 90 degree angle with the ball now resting on the fibres of the pec itself. So if you've got any breast tissue, um, that has any scar tissue, this might be too intense work for that. So you would come to use a softer ball or maybe just skip out the trigger point therapy itself. But here I'm placing the ball more or less roughly, again, in line with that elbow joint if the arm was at 90. And I can position myself against the wall, utilizing the pressure. I still utilize the arm at 90 and I can have a little rotation through the pelvis and the torso to get the work that I need and to find any knots or any pressure points where I can hold pressure through the ball into the wall for five to 10 breaths. And then I can release and roll again. So here I would be utilizing different points of pressure, utilizing that 90 degree angle against the wall itself and the ball. And equally I can do each side. Now equally, if either of those standing positions do not suit you, or you'd like to look at lying on your side, and getting a nice chest stretch here, we can use our thoracic rotations to do that. And you know that's a side lying position. So you can lie on your side with the knees bent at 45 degrees from the hip joint. You will need to realign the head or neck so you could place a towel or a pillow underneath the earlobe here. The bottom arm is going to reach out from the chest, top arm resting on top. And for your thoracic rotations, you're keeping your neutral spine so your bottom waist lifted with the T-zone on and the top hip bone wants to remain forwards. So you're going to reach this top arm forwards first on the inward grip, press the top hip forwards, keeping the T-zone working the bottom waist up, float your hand towards the ceiling and follow it with your eye line and your thumb. Push the palm behind you, stretching open the chest, gently pushing the hips forwards, 
and that will give you a nice lateral stretch of the chest muscle itself. Inhale, hand to ceiling. Exhale, close palm to palm. You can repeat this nice thoracic rotations, working on that chest. Stretch at the front line of the body from fingertip to fingertip for five to 10 reps, depending on how you feel. Again, if this promotes too much pressure on the neck, you can pop something underneath the ear to realign the neck and soften the cervical tension through the spine if you like. Repeat both sides and that way you'll get a nice chest release. 